superintendent with the uh, City of London Police. Uh, he served in the UK, uh, Middle East, and Eastern Europe, and he led the international peace operations as part of the United Nations mission in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, as a member of the UK government's fraud review panel, he was responsible for designing and delivering groundbreaking counter-fraud services, including the National Fraud Intelligence Bureau, National Fraud Reporting Centre, and the Lead Force for Fraud. The losses uh, to uh, cyber are enormous. What I want to pick up on though is this uh, cyberberg that rests ahead of us. There's that huge uh, iceberg of crime which is cyber, which is sort of 21 billion. These are the figures, these aren't my figures, these are from the Cabinet Office which, which we talked about earlier in their Detica work from 2011. And also over here, the fraud side. Let's not split them up as if, you know, oh there's fraud over here, there's cyber there, and then there's street crime. Be very convenient if you could do that. They're all the same. These are villains who have moved into different types of crime. Yeah, they're still around, and I'll show you what they're like. But I want to pitch on that thing because let's put them together. 42 billion. This cyber fraud berg, cyber enabled. Yeah, they're villains who commit crime. That's a big amount. If it's 121 billion, and we're losing 42 billion to fraud and cyber which I don't know whether the 42 billion is lost opportunity or is part of 121 billion, but whichever way it is, it's either 25 to 30 percent of, of loss. That, I think, if it was coming off my bottom line, if we were suffering that loss at home with our home accounting or with our friends <coughs> or business was, you'd suddenly be very interested. What they say is of 600 major investigations currently being pursued by Europol, half, half of those 600 have links to the UK. Uh, that would mean that around 1,500 gangs are currently targeting the UK, making it in line to become the crime capital of Europe. Because this is what they do. They traffic people. They sell human commodities. They sell identities. They sell data to the highest bidder. And they actually don't care less. They sell their own family in order to get that next supercar Rolex, nice watch. I mentioned some of the weaknesses, this is the last one for good news, is got to double check the amount of businesses I see. I said open source checking, a good information security management procedure will be able to evidence that you've checked, that you've done your due diligence. And what about just checking company records? Because in the UK, you know, the amount that is so, it's wonderfully easy to set up a company. Anybody, anybody register the company themselves or, yeah, or, or this one, you know, you know how easy it is. Was it about 15 quid now? The villains know that too. And you can open your bank account, can't you? And then oh, well, I deal a lot in cash and we're off. Now the good news. <laughs> I'll try and liven up a bit here. There is good news. I, I personally think, you know, what we're doing in the country, Britain is ahead of the game here. We've got some awful scare stories around the world. We're fighting for all together on that cyber and that other world. There's no country that brings people together like this. I was very lucky in the city police. Those national units were people seconding people in and giving data to help fight crime. The city police have now got a cyber reporting unit. People put their websites in. I did it. I can get one of those calls on a, on a Saturday morning from somebody who says I've got some problem with my computer at home. Yeah, I reported that. All joins up now and that website got taken down. So it's starting. We've got those. And, and the cyber security strategy of which Cyber Essentials is the beginning. Many other countries aren't even looking at this. Multilingual risks, that's one area, as I said, I've been working on. I think we're sitting on a time bomb um, in that there's a lot goes on socially and online that isn't in English. The world kind of speaks English when it wants to. Yeah? Let's not just do the Brit thing like I do on holiday and raise your voice. Yeah? <laughs> Let's listen. Great intelligence. Um, and this is a case study. Can this be done? Um, I thought, I was asked by today translations, I work with say advisory now, can you help with us to get it because we've got this global network, we've already got secure system, we have an ISMS but we, our, our, two of our big clients would interest if we have ISL 27,000, well not a problem, I've done that more than in the city, I have a management system that they built up thinking security. Um, but you talk about 100 languages, 100,000 projects, 2,500 uh, linguists and specialists, bits of 
sensitive commercial documents, you know, websites, events with major dignitaries, and you put in a, a linguist in Paris or Moscow to stand with them. You and I can't go and stand with them. I've got a badge on the linguist, let me in, you know. You can see all the problems. Military get it, most firms don't. Yeah? Or we're getting a linguist in the city when, when we get to Moscow, Shanghai, who's locally provided, so they can be at the dinner with you. Handy. Please, let's get by in. No time to fall asleep on this at the, at the top level. Thanks ever so much. I'm around for questions later and I've gone over my time. Thank you very much, Dave.